I hope everybody hears me properly now. And the screen is also proper. So I'm going to talk about introducing continuous delivery design patterns today. Um, this, is, uh, this talk is inspired by one of our books, which is upcoming. And I'm writing it with Michelle, Muktesh, and Pawel. If you're in the room, you can raise your hands. And this is a little difficult topic. So I'll try to go slow. And if you have any questions for us, we, you can still find us in the hallway. But it's a very, very important conversation which we are taking today. What I have done is, uh, because it's a difficult conversation, I have uh, divided my talk into three parts. The first part would be to talk about continuous delivery, its business value, uh, the OKR alignments, and why we should talk about CICD design patterns and how it aligns to the business goals and objectives for a leader. The second part of this conversation would be continuous innovation and why CICD design pattern is the next steps in the evolution and how do we conceptualize this with open source. And the third part is managing CICD design patterns with open source. So obviously you can see that there's a lot of content here so I'll try to cover most of it, but if in case there is some questions, of course, uh, you know where I am. Why we are talking about uh, the evolution and the continuous innovation which is needed for continuous delivery and the next steps. Because if you are an engineering leader or you lead a development team, even if you are a product manager or a project manager, I'll ask you one question. Have you ever thought about how software delivery life cycle, the software design, development, operations would look like in next five years? Hashtag 2030. And what are the challenges, typical challenges, if you are a leadership a member, what challenges you would face in terms of leading this next steps and trying to decipher, I don't have a crystal ball in my hand, but I essentially nail down three parts of this. The first part and the first challenge as a leader, what I see is the paradox of choice. And many people have uh, alluded to this fact that there is a need for standardization, there is a need to consolidate how we are taking that next step in the continuous delivery posture. That unprecedented and unstudied, largely unstudied growth in technology. I think it's evident that technology can shift either way. We have seen it in the post-pandemic era. Previously, it was DevOps. Now, it's platform engineering. And with the plethora of tools and explosion into generative AI space, I think nobody can predict what will happen in the next five years. As a technology leader, I think I am not comfortable predicting that future. But what I am comfortable stating that what has delivered value for us is the change in the engineering culture, the mindset, the meta skills. That will still remain relevant, right? So we will start to piggy bank upon that change and see what are the next steps in the evolution of continuous delivery. The second part, uh, I thought that it is also important to allude to that fear of missing out. And why I say that is designing software for everyone is the next challenge. It can be overwhelming, it's interesting as well, but it's also challenging, right? If you talk about like civil services, defense, retail, um, many other kind of uh, you know, applications and tools which will come into life, and we are developing it for generation of citizens. So it is already a lot of, there is a, a, already a, co a lot of cognitive load on the practitioners, on the leaders. So how do we navigate that challenge? And the third part is commodified experiences. And again, this is a very, very interesting point of view that what would good and fair software look like? And how do we take it as software leaders, professionals, regulatory bodies? What do you see? Like all these things, climate solution, positive impact, green software, responsible AI, does it tell you a story? If it does, then this talk is for you because I think the next steps which we are trying to advocate is in that direction that we include those parts of uh, software delivery into our day-to-day -day 
you know, uh, jobs. Now I would like to introduce myself. If you're still in the room, I think you are uh, interested in this conversation. I'm the founder for the Canada DevOps Community of Practice. I'm also the producer for Summits Canada, chair for the ambassador program at CDF. I've authored the Strategizing Continuous Delivery in Cloud, one of my publications which has come out last year. And uh, I'm also uh, a co-author for the CICD Design Patterns. This is a very ambitious book which we are trying to kind of bring out. My call to action is leadership and communities. So how do we work with communities to bring more leadership and evolutionary changes as we go along? So obviously, let's start with the continuous delivery and how, you know, if anyone in this room or maybe some of you already have a seat on the table would understand that how difficult it was to demystify the identity crisis of changes and transformative landscape uh, which DevOps brought in. How difficult it was to get investment buy-ins for tools and applications which were like led by, let's say, continuous delivery. So it's a ground up movement. It did take us time to shift it to top down, right? So essentially the narration has to change and the narration has to bring continuous delivery as a trusted advisor, as a culture curator, or as a growth catalyst, even as a starter kit for developing new methods and ways of working. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. CICD design pattern. Is this the new method and way of working which we can inject into platform engineering and we also can in inject other emerging technologies into the CICD design patterns? So obviously I'm stating uh, the fact and uh, everybody knows software is eating the world, but an extension to it is AI is eating the software. So obviously what I'm alluding to is today it's, uh, yesterday it was DevOps, today is platform engineering, tomorrow it will be something else. So how do we cope up with this constant evolution and constant innovation which is happening in a continual manner? Innovation cycles are not discrete enough anymore. We have to enable our software practitioners to look at constantly the changes which we have to bring in, and standardization is not an option. So obviously, you can, uh, you can say that you know, it's a very easy job. Okay, it's technology trans, uh, standardization. So we have different foras and different organizations who are looking at it, right? But it's not only technology standardization, it's about team. It's about architecture, it's about infrastructure, it's about process, it's about tool. It's also about release strategies and deployment strategies, right? As a leader, you have to holistically look at everything, right? So how do you bring the next generation of evolution with that perspective that this has to be holistic? That change cannot be navigated with only one focus area. So obviously I will move to the next section or next part of this talk, which is, okay, now continuous delivery, we agree that it's still evolving. It comprises of architectural capabilities. It also uh, comprises of deployment models. It comprises of several aspects of business operations, right? And there are many organizations like NIST, TM Forum, OGF, um, IEEE, CNCF, and CDF. All these organizations are trying to steer some kind of standardization into this space so that our lives becomes easier, right? And on top of it, it's the security and the compliance organizations and the frameworks which we have. So there are new frameworks emerging. We, I think we had several talks uh, on these lines today with supply chain levels for uh, software uh, artifacts. And we also have some guidelines coming from you know, these foras like America's supply chain and improving the national cyber security. I have all the li these links. So the, the software delivery posture is be becoming more and more complex and data intensive. It's not a choice to not look into that direction that we have to standardize. So obviously, some attempts have been made to do so. So the first attempt which has been made to standardize this is through a reference architecture landscape. And CDF has been leading this opportunity with um, putting together the 
continuous delivery reference architecture. It's available for the practitioners to look at. There is another, uh, you know, other organizations. I have also referenced AWS here because they are also aggressively looking at like how reference architecture can be standardized in the context of cloud. So, and these are only two examples, but there are many more examples. So obviously the movement has started. Now it's time that we look into the next steps. What after reference architecture? Reference architecture will provide you some kind of a baseline or a guidance. And I will differentiate reference architecture with design patterns. So what reference architecture does, it is a high level abstraction of set of patterns or design patterns. And what design pattern is? Design pattern is solving a specific problem. So if you think about, let's say, a specific domain, let's say a regulated domain, then it, we have deployment posture for CI, CD, which can solve that prop specific problem. And that becomes a design pattern. And if you have certain specific design patterns, these set of design patterns construct a reference architecture. So now we are going to talk about the design patterns because we have already kind of had this um, uh, you know, baseline from CDF, what kind of reference architecture we can build upon our design patterns. So design patterns for CICD is the next step of evolution for establishing the common vocabulary, the interaction points, and the proven implementation. Now, uh, we also need to understand what is the strategic intent for bringing design patterns to life. So obviously, as I said, software applications are becoming more complex and uh, data intensive. So we need to make our CI CD posture more readable, more modular, more evolvable, and more efficient. And there has to be a systematic way of doing it, right? So these design patterns, you can assume from a high level perspective, it's a predefined catalog of design patterns which you will get with some connected templates and infrastructure and pipeline components, which you can build your CI CD on. And of course, uh, this is again a difficult topic because you might uh, ask me that what are the features of design pattern? So there are four essential four features of design pattern. The first thing is reusability. The design pattern is a solution to a common problem. Right? The second thing is abstraction. So providing a channel to extend and add more features. How many of you in the room work with multi-product? And then there is a plethora of pipelines. And then you also have a problem of how do you scale your pipelines? Is it vertical scaling or is it horizontal scaling? When you add a product, do you vertically scale a pipeline or horizontally scale a pipeline? When you add a feature, what happens? So again, these are the kind of challenges which are kind of coming to life and this needs to be addressed. And obviously, um, this can be addressed with these design patterns and, um, and we have to work on the maintainability of the design pattern and the flexibility and adoption of these design patterns. And it, this will grow with time and it will mature, right? So obviously, this is a very new topic and I, uh, I don't want to give away too much from the book, but what we essentially found out is there are four typical design patterns which we would advocate as a first maturity level. The first part is the structural design pattern. The structural CI-CD design pattern, what it will give you, the fundamental pattern on which you can scale. Right, so there are some rules and guidelines that this should be your fundamental uh, CI/CD design pattern. This is how you can build it, and then when you uh, come to scaling it for new products or new feature, this is how you can scale it because the structure remains the same. You know, the guiding principles remain the same, and I will not give away a lot of things like what are the guiding principles or the building blocks, but you know, you can allude to that the building blocks will be the components. Uh, of the CI CD pipeline, there will be a pipeline layer and then there will be some kind of an orchestration. The second uh, design pattern which we talk about is creational design patterns. And if you're working in cloud, you might understand this part 
uh, a little bit more differently, that if AWS or Azure or any other cloud provider has a CI CD pipeline, you can just in instantiate that pipeline and that becomes your creational design pattern. So there is no need of doing any additional effort or making any additional changes to that creational design pattern. Just instantiating the design pattern would help you, right? So that is another area and many organizations might be working on this, uh, not only cloud providers. The third part is the behavioral CI CD design pattern and if uh, I can quote an example of CD events, for example. So it is a very good example of how they have managed the brokership of the events and how they are passing those events to one stage to other, right? So this is the behavioral design pattern where you work on a communication layer and a standard interface to provide this kind of interoperability, right? So this is the behavioral design pattern. The fourth design pattern we came up with is domain de driven design pattern, which is mainly for regulated industries, like if you think about defense, or even uh, you know critical infrastructure, telecommunication, these organizations would have domain de driven design pattern because they have an additional layer of you know security, compliance requirements, and that is where you can embed it into your design pattern, and it can be becoming very simple with the longer run and the maturity curve of these design patterns. So, I mean, I just wanted to introduce these design patterns in a lightweight way, so you can understand and grasp the concept. And as I said, that's from a sort of structural design pattern, this is like having, you can visualize it having three layers, common component layer, which is basically your um, metadata tools, uh, how do you design repositories, and so on and so forth. The second part is your pipeline layer, which is more of, you know, how do you extend your pipelines with additional capabilities and additional features and introducing new projects. When you add new projects, what happens? And the third layer would be the deployment layer. So obviously the deployment stages and the techniques. So obviously there are many deployment techniques you can follow. Progressive delivery has offered a lot uh, more deployment techniques and that can be kind of industrialized. So this is the whole concept of, you know, how do you build design patterns on top of, uh, you know, whatever already existing solutions we have, just to standardize and look at it uh, in a different way. Now, I also wanted to talk about the North Star for continuous de delivery design pattern. Is it something, a new shiny thing on the block? And, you know, how do you, uh, how do you assess the business value for this? So obviously, uh, we need to look at the productivity of CI CD design patterns. So we, we can actually see how it fulfills, let's say, DORA me measurements, or uh, how do we complement it with other measurements like green code, responsible injection of AI, and so, so on and so forth. Transparency, traceability, and accountability. So see through supply chains, reducing the administrative cost and effort for maintaining the deployed design patterns. Interoperability, we have talked about it. Uh, in detail and I've also given and cited some examples. Discovery, of course, how do we include new ways? Like how do we scale the adoption of new ways like injecting security and compliance, AI enabled tools and techniques? So these are uh, some factors which can kind of uh, guide us through to the maturity of these design patterns. And if we measure it properly, I think we might be able to succeed. So. The third part would be managing CI/CD design patterns. And, you know, as we have seen that there are many initiatives and there are many things which are happening at the same time. So how do you assess that? Is it valuable for your organization? And are you ready for uh, adoption of design patterns in your organization? So there are many questions to it. I would say that look uh, this from a holistic perspective. So what do you want to achieve with these design patterns? Do you want to have a less operating cost or improved cash flow in the short term? Or you want to have some kind of a, a boost on your customer satisfaction or you know, reduce your team fatigue? Reliability and security, is this something which is very important for you and you are looking for the brand value and the customer trust? Or 
specific to like some uh, domains, like defense, for example. Um, how do we build certification and standards into our uh, you know, CICD posture? So looking at this from a holistic perspective, you can assess where you are in the maturity and if you are ready for adoption of these design patterns or not. And then also to put together some kind of a measurement and forward-leaning goals and actionable objectives. So obviously I will not talk more about it, but you know, how do uh, these design patterns help you rapidly release, uh, release your software? Or does it improve your de developer productivity? Does it improve your cost efficiency? Do, do you have enhanced security posture? Or lastly, I think uh, innovation and disruption of the status quo. So the primary job of the developer becomes adding product features to your products and innovating new products rather than managing your continuous delivery pipelines. I will also uh, make it part of the operational model because I mean, of course, where does design pattern come into existence and why we should focus on it as leaders. So obviously, starting from the continuous delivery culture, we uh, move up in the chain. We should have some kind of a goals and actual objectives to align to our initiatives like content delivery. And uh, we should look at uh, reference architecture as the first step for adoption of this design patterns. Once you have baseline your reference architecture, I think it's the way uh, to go for the design patterns. And you can also think about, you know, how do you orchestrate these design patterns? You can embed it into a platform engineering space where you, it becomes very uh, much more easier for you to kind of just work out a pipeline and, you know, have the CI CD workflow just built in in uh, no time. So obviously, uh, it looks very fancy and I, I think this is a new concept. We will be coming up with some examples and some uh, more, uh, you know, um, guiding principles around all these design patterns. But how do we come up with these design patterns? We looked at the value stream mapping as one of our principles. So what value stream mapping does is analyzing software value streams in uh, about encouraging the continuous flow. How do we make our system not resource centric plus flow centric. So if you start to look at it from a design pattern perspective, the CI CD makes it more flow centric. It's again, it reduces the overhead of managing everything and also leveraging your automation uh, and uh, you know, leveraging the contents delivery as a tool to deliver the flow. The second thing which we also took into consideration is applied observability. So if you have these design patterns which are industry standardized, I think it, we have a better opportunity to succeed with applied observability because we will have the metadata, we have the tools, and we speak the same language, right? So it is a better chance that we can make um, ob uh, applied observability, not a single tool or a technology, but looking at it as, as a system, system of uh, tools and technology which can provide you applied observability. And at the end of the day, shared responsibility model. So obviously, when you look at uh, design patterns, you will also have to have some kind of a structuring of your teams to look at the roles and responsibility, who manages what, and how do share responsibility model would work in this context. With that, I think uh, I come to the end of this talk with some perspective on uh, evolution and the innovation which is happening. Um, if you have noticed like in the past decades, the innovation cycles were more discrete. It took some time, but now with software, I think we don't have so much of time. This, this is fast paced, we have to build it with speed and it's not discrete anymore, it's continual, right? And continuous delivery obviously is the center point of all the innovation because it provides you that capability to feed in the feedback loops, right? And also making uh, your applications more data centric would help you enable progressive delivery and many other things which you can solve through continuous delivery when you abstract or orchestrate the overhead. So with that, I think uh, that was my last slide for today. But if you are still curious about how are we thinking about 
reference architecture, their standardization, and how reference architecture is like set of design patterns and all these design patterns, how do they come to life? I think uh, me, uh, Michelle, and Muktesh, he's not in the room, I guess. He's in the room. Uh, we are in the hallway, so we would love to talk about all this and much more. And if you have any feedback, please do mention to us because the book is still in making.